we live? Cool. Hey, everybody, welcome to Strum It Up, where we're going to spend 10 weeks working on rhythm playing, working on strumming. We're not going to be doing finger picking. We're not going to be doing really a whole lot of, of left hand or fret hand work at all. Uh, maybe a little bit, but for the most part, we're going to be working with strumming, rhythm, feeling the groove. I can't do much of anything right now since I have two guitars on me, but I wanted to make the point uh, opening up here again that this is for electric players and acoustic players alike. Both of you are going to be able to benefit from this immensely. To start with, we are not going to be using any guitar. We'll use a little bit of guitar later in this series or in this lesson. Um, but we're going we're gonna to start by just looking at our internal rhythm clock. And so we're going to use our knees, our chests, and our stomachs a little bit and start feeling the groove and start, under, start internalizing note values. So I'm going to put both of these down for now. Now, I'm really excited about this series because there's... There's a lot of that has to do with, with strumming, and particularly as I was planning this, that I really feel like you can only do live. There's, there's that try this aspect where you can see me do something, uh, you can participate, and you can ask for clarification. Strumming, rhythm, uh, and that, that sort of internal rhythm and groove is a lot more complicated to teach than simply saying, hey, put your finger here and do this, which a lot of times with licks and with, uh, with other things, it's, it's just more straightforward. So um, <clears throat> the first thing that I want to do is remind you that it is live, that we can, you can ask questions, that uh, you can even call in, and, uh, and I can see you. So if we're, if we're analyzing pocket or we're analyzing... Um, technique or you're getting hung up on something that's preventing you from being able to to do what I'm demonstrating I can actually see you and and redirect and help you so make sure you take advantage of some of that stuff so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get familiar with note values a lot of this stuff you know some of you guys who've been playing guitar for a while you may think when, as we're starting from such a square one basis, and you may be thinking, ah, I don't know, just play. Well, that's almost the problem with a lot of people and the rhythm playing, is that they don't take time to develop what I've called in this series the, the human metronome or the internal rhythm before they start playing. Most people hear a song, try to strum along to it, and they, they start feeling awkward. They start, and, and they wonder why. So even if you've been playing a while, even if you do strum and you, and you know what you're doing, stick with me here because there's going to be some mental multitasking that's going to happen. There's going to be some, some things that you may not have thought of as you've been developing your own strumming uh, that, that I can bring to light. So first of all, note values. Uh, go ahead and bring up the PDF for, for this if you look at line one, where it says 4-4, four, four, right on the top there, we've got the note values that we're going to be working with for this lesson. The first slash is a whole note. Now, if we have a whole note going on, and if I, if I play a click track, you hear the accent. It's a little bit louder every four. One, two, three, four, one two, three, four. The whole note takes four of those beats for our applications in, in most of this series. We're going to be doing some other time signatures later. The half note, which is the second measure there, it takes up half the measure. So you would count that one, three, one, three, one, two, three, That'd be quarter notes. That's measure three. So the quarter note would be on every click. One, two, three, four. Now let's get the accent right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Moving down to, uh, to measure five, we have eighth notes. Eighth notes are gonna be counted with an and. So there are, there are two claps or two note values per click that you're hearing. And this click is at 80 beats per minute, if anybody's wondering. Three, four, one, and, sorry, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Go ahead and clap along with me. Internalize that eighth note feel. Eighth notes against a quarter note rhythm, against a quarter note click. Very important. We're gonna get into how to internalize this a little bit more later. Then we got 16th notes down to the third line. It's hard to clap. Okay, so. We've got whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. And the rest of the stuff you see on this PDF, we're going to be going over later in the series, uh, or in this, in this lesson. Um, but I want you to be familiar with those note values. And now we're going to talk a little bit about internalizing certain note values and developing your own body clock, uh, your body metronome. The first thing we want to be able to do is simply count along with a metronome. And I've done a little bit of this already. Counting with a metronome, especially when you start doing rhythm patterns that are not just straight things like you saw uh, 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 later on that PDF, is so important. To be able to count is so important because you understand if, you, if you're feeling an accent or um, you're trying to be creative with a certain strum, if you can know in your mind where you are in the beat, there's a very freeing thing about that. So we're gonna go back to the, the click. I'm gonna practice counting quarter notes, but I'm going to clap eighth notes. Make sure you're doing these things along with me. Even if you already strum, do them with me. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, when I'm doing that, when I'm counting on the one, two, three, four, and I am use and I'm and I'm clapping the eighth notes. There's this built-in accenting thing that goes on where I tend to clap louder on the areas where I'm counting. So it's if I were to if I were to do it count silently. It's already musical. I'm not doing this. Right? You also notice that there's a little bit of body movement going on. I'm internalizing that rhythm. This may seem very obvious right now without a guitar in hand, but a lot of us will do, you know, we'll, you know, internalize the rhythm or move a little bit while we're in our cars doing something. But then we get the guitar and we freeze up and we don't, we, we don't quite know where to go with our strumming hand. So we're, we're going to spend some time without the guitar and then make that transition smoothly so that we carry over some of this natural rhythm feeling by the time we get over to the guitar. So uh, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose the metronome for a minute and I'm gonna be the metronome with my counting. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap my foot a little bit. You can see my knee moving. Three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna stop counting. I'm gonna stop counting. I'm gonna let my foot do the count. My foot's gonna be the metronome. I'm gonna tap my foot. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna clap eighth notes. Notice the accent and the musical feel that I have. 
Now I'm gonna rub my stomach and pat my head. No, okay. That is sort of that kind of thing though, right? Where, you know, it's like, you have to be able to sort of divide your brain a little bit, keep a pulse, keep a general rhythmic feel, and, and diverge. This is fairly easy when you're doing straight eighth notes or straight quarter notes or straight sixteenth notes. When we get into some of the patterns, which we're gonna to get to in a little while, it begins to be more difficult. So I'm excited to get there. I'm gonna stop right now and take any questions if there are any. If there aren't, we're gonna move on. If those of you in the chat would, would give me some feedback and just say, hey, we're tracking, we're good. Jeff wants to hey, speak. Yeah, I just have an announcement. Um, Apparently our chat room caps out at 100 people. So if you're watching and trying to get into the chat and you can't, and you want to ask a question, just send an email. Please don't make me regret this. Send an <laughs> email to Jeff at jamplay.com. Um, we're working on getting it fixed, but I've been advised that the license might not be an instant upgrade. So we basically just need to upgrade our license. In the meantime, does Anyone have questions? It looks like there are some coming in, and Chad cool. is going to go ahead and read those. I feel naked without a guitar, so I'm going to pick one up while I'm answering questions. All right, questions are coming. Cool. Do I need some like elevator music while we're waiting? Sorry, waiting on it to load. Here we go. Okay, from Upstate SC, does Chris still count in his head? Do I still count in my head? I, well, it depends on, on what I'm doing. When I'm trying to figure something out, and, and this is part of what I was sort of alluding to at the beginning. When I'm trying to figure something out, I absolutely count it. There, then you want, you want to count it, and then you sort of want to internalize it so that you're forgetting about the nuts and bolts and you, it becomes part of your muscle memory, part of your body. But when I am figuring something out or when I'm uh, arranging stuff, absolutely I count in my head. Um, also, there's always, there might not be like actual numbers and like one yen to two yen to things going on, but if I'm, if I'm reading along with a chart or if I'm playing, along with particularly other people. And I know that there are certain rhythm things that we all need to cover together. You know, let's say it's something like a, <laughs> something like that. The song goes into a bridge and, and that's the, the pattern that happens. I might, I might internalize that rhythm and you know, one, two, three, I might count that so that I know that at that point I can say that in my head and I know that, that I can hit it with the rest of the band. So I don't count all the time. Here's the short answer. I don't count all the time. Most of the time I want it to be internalized uh, so that I'm feeling it. But a lot of the times when I'm figuring something out, I absolutely count it. Okay, here's one from Ben Brady. What if coordination only happens every three seconds? <laughs> what if coordination happens every three seconds? It, that... So th that's a creative way of saying, wh what if you just don't feel that coordinated while you're doing this? Um, I think, and if it's not, ask it again, and I'll, uh, I'll answer it differently, but I'll go with that. I feel like th the first thing you need to do is, is pick a tempo that's comfortable uh, when you're doing this, and uh, start with a metronome tempo of less than 80. Uh, but if you notice, I'm not using a metronome. I just started, uh, right now, I just started with something that was comfortable. Uh, but the thing is, the main thing that we're going for with this, this initial stuff is that we want to feel it. And this idea of, of tapping your foot, learning to tap your foot while you're doing something else with your hands is so foundational to, to good rhythm playing. You know, you, you always watch these really good rhythm players uh, you know, and, you know, unless they're a drummer where their foots are occupied, they're tapping their foot anyway, right? But I, I, every time I see a fantastic rhythm player, they are tapping their foot and bobbing their head. And they have this idea that they're able to, to divide their body in such a way that, that part of their body is setting the pulse 
and the other part is interpreting the pulse. And that's exactly what we're doing when we're strumming. Uh, and not just strumming, but, you know, rhythmic lead playing or riffs or which, you know, we're going to get into some of that too. But um, what, if, what if you're not able to grasp, grasp this coordination? Well, if you're not able to grasp it right away, that, that's kind of the point of why we're here, right? Let's practice it. Let's do it. And that's, we're going to do a lot of that. That's why we're starting here. And you should be practicing this this, this week. You know, practice. I mean, be this silly about it. Practice this. Can you rub your stomach and pat your head at the same time? Can you reverse that and rub your head? That's right. Rub your head and pat your stomach. I had to think there for a minute. Notice even my, uh, even my hand is wanting to move in a circle. So these are, I mean, these are real drills that, and, and real things that are going to help you translate to rhythm playing on the guitar. I know it seems kind of silly, but that's the way it is. So if we go, is there any other questions before we move on? Yeah, we have a few. Okay. From Terrace, is less foot tapping the actual goal? Uh, maybe less exaggerated foot tapping is a goal. Uh, but I think that you're going to find after this 10 weeks that you're going to be tapping your foot or grooving in some way. Maybe it's not tapping your foot. Maybe it's grooving. Maybe it's, you know, doing that <laughs> or bobbing your head or something. But you're going to have this, the goal is to develop a, a body, your, your body is going to, going to absorb the rhythm and your hands on the guitar are going to interpret it. So it doesn't have to be your foot, but if the foot is a great place to start. Okay, from Vic Andrew. So you say we should tap our foot while playing? Yeah, I think that's a great thing to do. Tap your foot, and I'm what I'm doing, you can't see it, but I'm tapping, I, the toes on my feet are planted firmly on the ground, so I'm tapping my heel. You know, when I'm, when I'm doing this, my heel is hitting the ground, and that's, that's how I'm internalizing the rhythm. Tapping a foot is a great way to internalize the groove, start internalizing the groove. And when, whether I'm playing a, with a click, if I'm playing on stage, even if I'm singing into a microphone, I've got this thing going where I, I have to tap something. It helps, it helps bring me into the groove. Okay, one more yeah. for now. Um, whistle and Dixie, so your foot should tap at, quarter, at the quarter notes and yet you're clapping eighth notes? Yeah, that's where we started and we're gonna do a little bit more of that. I want you to do it with me. That's the goal right now. We're going to clap eighth notes and our foot's going to be tapping quarter notes. So let's go, if there are no other questions, let's go back there. So here, I'm quarter notes with my foot and my clap. Now I'm going to go to eighth notes with my clap. Groove to it. Accent on the foot taps. Can you talk while you do it? I can barely do it, barely talk. <laughs> Are you doing it with me? I can't stress how important this is to be able to get this simple, yet potentially very musical and life-changing skill. And it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. So if you're not able to do this, write a note to yourself. Practicing this in the mirror is an excellent thing to do. Okay, let's change it up a little bit. Let's, let's keep going with this theme where part of our body is doing quarter notes and part of our body is doing eighth notes. And we're gonna take it here. Notice I'm still tapping my foot. It's a habit now. On my chest, I'm playing eighth notes. My stomach, I'm playing quarter notes. Are you doing it with me? Try to do it with me. So my, my stomach and my foot are doing the same thing. I'm internalizing this groove. You can see my whole body's moving just a little bit. 
pretty constant. Let's go back to clapping. All right. Now, I'm gonna start the metronome back up again. I'm gonna keep it at 80, because that's comfortable for me. And you're gonna notice a big part of you when, you, when you are used to setting your own tempo, and then you are dictated a tempo, it, setting your own tempo is important. But there's this special thing that happens when you set a tempo with a metronome or another instrumentalist or whatever, and you've got to step up and be able to internalize that rhythm according to that master tempo. It's a different feeling. If you start incorporating it now, it's going to be a far less big a deal uh, later on. So, you know, early in my guitar playing career, I did not use a metronome. And when I had to start using metronomes in, in recording sessions, it was like, oh, I can't believe you have to I actually have to do this. Why can't I just play what I feel? But after several years of, of using a metronome, I was able to play what I felt using the metronome as a guide. So I wasn't playing to the metronome, I was playing with the metronome. So take it from someone who didn't do it and wish he had, start with the metronome. Turn it off, turn it on, but start with it now. I was actually at about 80 when I was doing it by myself. To the body. Chest is eighth notes. Notice the foot still tapping. Okay, you get the idea. How many of you are trying this at home? I would be interested to hear anybody who's interacting. Let me know if you're trying it, how's it working? I did just want to remind everybody, unfortunately our chat room is full. We did not know that we had a 100 chat limit. <laughs> so. Oh. I really do apologize for those of you who can't get into the chat. What we are doing right now is if you have a question and you can't get to, into the chat room, email me at jeff at jamplay.com or go to the live stream page, which I'm going to link in the uh, news post on the website and in the chat room, and I'll be watching the live stream feed for questions as well. Any feedback from anybody trying this of the people who are able to get in? <laughs> Chris, can you leave the chat? You're eating up a slot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot of people saying they've got it. Cool. Um, I have left the building. Let's see. See a couple people struggling with their foot going into what their hand is uh -huh. doing. That's cork 70. Yep. But lots of people are getting it. Cool. So that's good. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to add something to this now. This is going to be we're going to we're going to go to 16th notes now. And we're going to be we're going to start with the foot tapping. We're going to keep that going at quarter notes cuz that's our base, that's our bedrock. I'm going to slow it down intentionally so that I can get the groove. So I'm probably upper 60s now. But I'm not going to use a metronome right now. I'm going to go to the metronome in a minute. Sixteenth notes. Those are counted one E and two E and three E and four E and one E and two E and three E and four E and one E and two E and three E and four E and. Are you grooving? It's one thing to do it, but are you feeling the rhythm? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We want to do quarter notes 
eighth notes, sixteenth notes. Okay? So, this is where it starts, and this is, believe it or not, you're, why are we doing this? We strum the one hand. Here's why we're doing it. There are so many things going on when we're playing guitar. We're, we might be singing one rhythm. We're feeling the groove with our foot. We're strumming. The strumming isn't a constant thing. Doing this, and you always notice like drummers, they have to do this whole, it's called hand independence. They've got to do this kind of stuff all the time in order to be a really good drummer. The, the more hand independence we can develop as rhythm players, the better off we're going to be. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So you notice what I'm doing on the ands. Now I'm counting it first off, so that I can figure it out and know what I'm doing, and then I'm going to drop the counting and just internalize it and just. Okay. Now, when I was doing that, I actually moved to eighth notes here. So we're going to change that up. We're going to do quarter notes. My foot's back to quarter notes. Huh, screwed up. Okay, so what was I doing? One E, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and. So, what I'm doing is I'm taking, this is functioning as an and, this is functioning as quarters, and this primarily, unless I go down there, is functioning as sixteenth notes. It gets a lot more difficult, but if you can get in the groove of that, And sometimes I'm hitting this twice. So this is, this is the process that you want to go through. Internalize it so it doesn't feel awkward. There we go. Notice the accents. The accents really help me. Now I'm having to think a lot less about it because I've internalized it. Quarter notes, sixteenth notes, eighth notes. Let's uh, slow the metronome down a little bit so I can do it at a pace that I'm comfortable with. Um, and uh, we'll try it with the metronome. Let's try this. It's about right. Three, four. Whoa, okay, so I'm gonna have to start here. One. There's my pulse. Three, four. Get the sixteenth notes. I'm feeling good about that. I've internalized, I've relaxed a little bit. That's feeling good. How many of you are doing this with me? And this is a great place to stop for questions. I want to get a gauge for how you guys are doing. It, it sounds like many of you were very, very on top of it when we were doing the eighth note thing with the, with the foot. We added sixteenth notes, and then we added eighth and sixteenth notes, so we're doing three subdivisions at once. Give me a gauge for how things are going and ask me some questions. Uh, we don't have any specific questions so far, but uh -huh. we've got people uh, sweating and slapping themselves in the face and <laughs> struggling. <Excellent>. So, 
Um, maybe we need to just kind of rework it a little bit and go through it again maybe. And I don't know. People are struggling a little bit. Okay, we'll, we'll do more. Applied, applied practicing. And just a quick reminder, we are very, very sorry. Our chat room is full. We had no idea we had 100 license capacity, 100 user capacity with our license. So we're working on getting that fixed. It probably won't be done tonight, but we have opened the chat room and live stream up. If anyone wants to go there, check out the news page on Jamplay or our forum. Um, we put a link there so you can ask questions there. Um, again, we are really sorry about this, and thank you so much for all coming and making this uh, very successful. <laughs> okay, so we are gonna we're gonna build from the ground up again. We're gonna we're gonna keep the metronome here at this slower pace. You know, I still have the metronome setting at 80, but I'm at 80% of 80. So anybody who's good at math could tell me what that is. My guess is it's like 60-something. 72. 72? Is that 80% of 80 is 72? All right. Nice, Jeff. I don't know. I just made that up. Oh, you did? Okay. I thought, man, wow, he's good. 64, I think. 64? Well, do what's comfortable. That's the whole point, right? We don't even... 64. 64, okay. <clears throat> okay, so going back. 64 BPM. Get that foot going. Eighth. No, it's just two quarters. Don't even touch your guitar yet. There's a reason I don't have a guitar with me right now. Eighths. Count it to start with. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and don't count. Accent, feel the groove. Where's one? Play louder on the one. You should be doing this with me. It's the whole point. Otherwise, it's just watching a silly video of a guy slapping himself. One, hit your legs. One. Where's four? Two, three, four, one. We're dropping an eighth note in there. One and two and three and four. One. And two. Already, yeah, you can see where this is going, right? Strum patterns. It's not about keeping all constants. It's about using art with it. And that was just a little taste of where we're going. Okay. We're on eighth notes. My foot is still feeling the quarter notes. Sixteenth notes, we're going to sixteenth notes. Gotta acclimate to that groove again. Internalize the sixteenth note feel. Notice that accenting helps internalize that groove. It's not just about hitting the, the subdivisions. It's about being musical with it and rhythmic. Snap that one. Feel the one. Feel the quarter note. 
Don't hit your wedding ring if you've got one on, that hurts. Keep that going, internalize this rhythm. Now we're gonna add the eighth note on the leg. In order to add that eighth note, you need to have that, you need to have that 16th note feel welling up within you, right? You need, to, you need to have that sense that that 16th note is internalized. You notice when I went from the eighth note to the 16th note feel, I had to adjust my muscles a little bit. I had to adjust my perspective on the beat. And that's something that you're gonna encounter with the guitar all the time, and we do, but we don't realize we do because we're not starting from this step. That's why this is so important. One. Two and three and four and one and two. Notice when I'm counting, when I'm counting those ands, I'm getting this going. All right. So, what I just did is what you should be doing this week if this is the challenge for you. You should be you should be taking the rhythms, internalizing them in different parts of your body and creating this rhythm, creating this rhythm sense, this internal groove. We're not worried about at this point playing specific rhythm patterns. As you see on this PDF, the, next week, we're, we're gonna dive into that stuff more, right? Next week, we're gonna dive into actually playing real patterns and, and looking at them. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna be a little bit creative with this idea, and we're gonna make up very basic ones of our own. But before we do that, since Chad has the mic in his mouth, ready to ask questions, we'll take some questions. Okay. Cork 70, is the hand one, two, three, slap knee? Is the hand one, two, three, and... S well, okay, so we, we, need to, we need to go over the counting of... Maybe this is the question. We're, we're wanting to know what the counting is for when we're incorporating the quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. So, and what I did earlier is I counted the eighth notes so you could hear it, but we, let, me, let me break it down for you a little bit more. Let's get in the groove again. One, two, three, four, one, and three, and four, and so. One E and two E, slow it down. I'm slowing it way down so we can get the but I got a groove with it still. One, three, four, one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. So notice, this is half one, and, and so it's one, and two, and three, and that's happening while And if you systematically build up to it, like I'm doing, it doesn't feel awkward. Because if you start, if you go right into it and you start overthinking it, okay, this has got to happen, this is, then your brain explodes. But if you, if you really do build up to it, just like I did in this lesson, and thank goodness you can go back and watch this again, because you can work the transition, you can work the process with me. 
That's why this is so valuable, live and on demand. Next question. When tapping your foot, are you bouncing your whole foot up and down or tapping just your toe and heel or heel? Here's what I'm doing. See my foot? Right that? You don't see my foot. Almost see my foot. Yes, I like Adidas shoes. So here, here's what it looks like. That's what I'm doing on the ground. Doesn't mean you gotta do it that way. That's just how it works well for me in this setting. Now, if I was, if I was, if I was on stage standing up, I might be doing something more like, more like this. Might be the other foot. You know, so now we got one. Okay, so I'm clapping with my hands, you know, and you could you could imagine you're strumming, but you know, for whatever reason, when I'm standing, using my left foot feels better. But that's that's probably a very you know, and then I have this other thing when I'm standing too. Sometimes I'll <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, it just it just depends on on how I'm feeling the groove or how intense it is. Um, I think it's important to be able to do it a bunch of different ways. Um, because that's, that's again, part of internalizing the rhythm, you know, is that comfortable? Is it more comfortable to do it with this? You know, so right now you can't see it, but I'm patting my leg on an eighth note while I'm feeling the quarter note with my foot. So hopefully that helps. Next question. From John R., my foot and my hands keep messing up and start doing the same thing. Any tips? Uh-huh. Yep, that is, uh, that's the main thing that's going to happen. <laughs> that's, that's good. It's, the, the fact that you've reached this point, John R., that you realize you're screwing up means that you're really trying it, and that is awesome. So here's the tip. Set that metronome. Set the metronome and let it be one of the things, okay? So we've got, I'm gonna bring this back up to 80 for, for the, uh, or 100% uh, of 80, so actually 80. And I'm gonna play the, the click again. We're gonna let the click be our, our foot for now. And you're just gonna feel eighth notes with your hands. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Got it? Accent it. Nail the quarter note. Nail the click. One, two, three. Watch that wedding ring. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Already you're multitasking. If you're counting the quarter note and playing the eighth note, you're doing, you're almost there. You're almost there. So, if you've got that, you're 80% of the way there. Now let's do this. Same thing again. We're just gonna tap our foot to the quarter note. Don't worry about the multitasking yet. Just tapping our foot. Now count it, count eighth notes. One and two and three and four and you are multitasking if you are doing this. One and two and three and four and two and three and four. Then once you've got these two things down where you're able to count an eighth note and feel a quarter note, count an eighth note, feel a quarter note, you're almost there. Take those two steps first and then add this in. That's the key. That's the best tip I can give you. 
scale it back and dissect it so that when you put things together, it's easier. Next question. From Gary NY42, can this be learned or should it come naturally? It should absolutely not come naturally. <laughs> this is all 100% learned and practiced. 100% learned and practiced. Um, I can't stress that enough. This does not come naturally. Maybe to a select few, it certainly didn't come naturally to me. I am not a naturally coordinated person. Like, I'm really lousy at ball sports. I'm decent at, you know, running and anything that doesn't take a lot of coordination. Um, but I, this had to be a learned coordination for me. And the interesting thing is, once I started practicing it and I knew how to practice it, it didn't take that long. Like, I fully believe that you guys who are doing this will, will be able to, to get a grasp on this this week. If you really work on this for a week, now you may not get the, you may not get all that stuff down. Pat, you might have experience with it, just enough to sort of get frustrated with it. But this idea of feeling the groove, feeling the groove with your leg and doing something else with your hands, even if it's just the eighth notes, feeling a quarter note in your legs, feeling the eighth notes with your hands, you can do it this week. I know you can. And I, the reason I'm saying that is because I've taught this in private lesson settings where I've had guys come to me with no rhythm and we spend an hour session doing this and they say this a lot of the same things that you guys are saying. Oh, I'm hitting myself in the face. I just tripped on my, you know, they say the same sorts of things. And I say, give it a week, give it two weeks. Not like you're gonna have this mastered in a week or mastered in two weeks or even mastered in 10. That's why we're here though. We're giving you the tools in a sequential process to help you master your rhythm playing. So will you master this by next week? No. Will you be able to do some of it by next week? Will you, will you start to understand what it means to feel the groove and internalize different subdivisions in different parts of your body? Absolutely you will, but you have to practice it. You have to. Hey guys, just real quick before the next question, we did want to remind you that uh, the chat room on the main site is full. We are limited to 100 people, and we went over that, so thank you all. But uh, that means some of you can't get in. If you can't get in, go to our live stream page um, and join there. There's a link to it in the news section of the Jamplay site and also in the forum, and we'll answer your questions there. You can also email jeff at jamplay.com with any questions. Please do not make me regret giving that out. Here we go. Back to the questions. I'll be emailing Jeff with some questions later. Okay. B minor. Should you be able to keep the quarter note rhythm with both feet? Uh, I haven't tried that. Kind of hard to. Two, three, four. I'm not going to make that a requirement for next week, but it's an interesting idea. Oh. Sure. That's actually really cool. It keeps, it's like this centralized energy. I like that. Again, not a requirement. You know, going back to the, the you know, I showed you a lot of different ways that uh, that's worked for me in terms of foot tapping. You know, add this to the list of things to try. I like that though. Wonder if I can do the sixteenth note thing. <laughs> That's difficult with both feet, mainly because this one's at different heights depending on which eighth note. Yeah, that's that's good. Okay, from McAndrew, is there a technique for getting the and beat on the leg? You know. Um, it's gonna go back to the same sort of principle that I talked about earlier, dissecting it, slowing down. It, in, in that example, when I, earlier when I slowed it way down, sometimes when you slow things down, when you slow rhythms down, it's harder to get them, right? Because you don't feel that internal sense of rhythm because it's so slow. So you don't wanna slow it down too much. You wanna slow it down enough though 
so you can feel it and not let coordination get in your way. For me, if I'm going, Sixteenth notes, one E and uh, at that tempo, I still feel the groove. But the coordination isn't a challenge. It might be slower for you. You know, memory aids can help with this too for, for initially getting it. If the counting is feeling screwy, assign words like dum dum do dum dum do. Well, let's see. Dum dum do do dum dum do dum dum do do dum. That doesn't work for me. That's confusing me more. One, one e and two e and three e. The counting really is what helps me when I initially because I know that every time I say an and, one e and, uh, two e and, uh, three e and, uh, four e and, uh, e and, uh, two e and, uh, three e and, uh, four e and. I know that every time I say an and, I'm hitting my leg, right? And I know that's why it's an eighth note. So that's, as I dissect that more, that would be the technique that I would recommend there is Count it, slow it way the heck down and count it. And when you say and, hit your leg. And if that's still difficult, you may need to, to put the metronome on so that you, someone else can help you, so the computer can help you get that rhythm. And then back up and take the metronome off and internalize the groove, then go back to the metronome. Next question. From A98GSXR, how does this relate to strumming? Excellent question. <laughs> It relates to strumming in the following way. And maybe you didn't hear this explanation at the very beginning. So thank you for bringing this up because I'm imagining that there's a lot of people who didn't hear this. Most people who strum, and I was one of them, pick up the guitar, learn some, try to learn their favorite song or learn a strum pattern, and they're not internalizing rhythm. They're not making it a part of their body. They're not tapping their foot. They're not grooving their head. They're not doing anything to internalize the rhythm. And so when they start strumming, here, here's, here's an example of non-internalized rhythm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit, but you've probably either seen someone do this or you've probably done it yourself. You hear someone strumming and they might be doing something like... Now, is that in time? Yeah. Am I doing different strum? Am I doing different subdivisions? I don't even know what I was doing. Um, but let's just take one of these things. I'm, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna do line. Go to the PDF. Uh, I'm gonna do line four. Um, measure one. So number thirteen there. One and two. One. Let's go to, um, I'm showing you how not to strum for those of you just joining us. Uh, let's go to uh, number 29. And I'm going to give a little bit away here just to answer the question for you. But that's not natural. And so many beginning players have some sort of variant of that. Even if I'm playing a chord that doesn't sound dumb. There's no life to it. Versus this. Difference. Same strum pattern, same rhythm. Now there's a lot more going on there that we're going to break down in future in future uh, sessions. Uh, 
but I wanted to make the point that one has this internal groove going on, and that's a very simple example, but it has this internal groove, internal metronome thing going on, and it just is more musical. And when you're trying to figure out strum patterns, when you're trying to make strum patterns, when you're trying to groove with other people, now look, when I take this to the guitar, I'm doing exactly what we just did, but with the guitar. The only reason I eliminated the guitar is because I wanted to focus on the the mental divisions and the, the body divisions that we're doing. If you notice, when I was doing that, what am I doing? Let's just, let's just do this, let's just do and, let's do foot. My foot is the quarter note, again. Now I'm gonna do eighth notes. Ah, but there's sixteenth notes in there. Anybody see it? Anybody see the 16th notes? My arm, I'm not playing any downstrokes. Now I am. Notice my arm didn't change. Ah, oh, I've given way too much away. Way too much. In order for more explanations, you'll have to join us next week. Um, but that's, it has everything to do with strumming. And I hope you see what we just did, where we did the, the, uh, the eighth notes, the 16th notes, and the quarter notes all at the same time. You should be doing that, and you should be thinking about that when you're playing the guitar, when you're developing your strumming. Notice the, the 16th note rhythm with the eighth note accent on the downstrokes, only playing the eighth note, having the 16th note going, and the foot feeling the quarter note. It's exactly what we just did. But if I had started there, you wouldn't have been challenged to divide that out and to start thinking about it that way. That's why we started there. Okay, from Gentleman Devil Music. Do you recommend switching between dominant and non-dominant side? Uh, no, I don't think that's that important for this. I think, I think what's important is that you have the separation. You understand how to internalize, you know, and I've, I've done this drill with, with, uh, without the leg, you know, where I've done, see if I can, see if I can do it. where I'm doing, see, there we go. So a quarter note leg, 16th note chest, eighth note stomach. It doesn't really matter where you do it. I mean, and those of you who are drummers or, you know, I won't do this very often, but I've got a three-year-old kid who does some of this stuff better than I do. It's incredible. He has that that hand independence, but he he play he pra actually practices a ton of, on it, um, which is which is remarkable. But in and he but he doesn't do specific things. He'll you know take his fork and drum on his tray, and he'll be doing something else with his other hand, and he's got a he's got a rhythm going. It's it's really interesting, but it doesn't really matter where you do it. Okay, Tracy one one four E. Does this become subconscious over time with experience? Uh, so, the, that's the goal, is that this will become more subconscious. You don't, you know, and this is the way it is with guitar, period, right? You don't, when you're learning something, you're very focused on it. And it, it is something that your, your brain, your body, everything's thinking about. But, you know, when I pick up a guitar now, and I sit down and, and I'm, I'm doing this, you know... <laughs> grooving. All those mechanics are going on. All those things are happening. And I did have to start. See, in, in my experience with guitar playing, I had to go way backward um, I, and start over with my rhythm playing. Because what I did, I learned scales first on the guitar. Um, I, I learned how to play simple melodies and solos and stuff like that. And I, I totally stunk at rhythm guitar. And I was doing a lot of what I exaggerated in the beginning where I was, you know, and four E and a one and two E and a three and four. I was doing that stuff, yet I could play these scales up and down the guitar, and th the rhythm sense was so bad. So I had to back up 
and really focus on, on, on very simple concepts like I'm showing you today, almost exactly like I'm showing you today. Once I did that, and then, and I got, I got this stuff down. And the beauty of that is you can practice that anywhere. You know, I'll do that on my steering wheel while I'm driving. If there's a song playing, I'll feel eighth notes and then I'll accent on the, on the other side of the steering wheel. It's a great little drill. Um, and that's, that's the, you know, how I started doing this, you know, commuting and, and drumming on the steering wheel, trying not to hit the horn. Uh, but it absolutely will become something that you don't have to think about as much. It's just like... If you're practicing a song and you practice that song, when you're learning that song, you're all into the details. When you go to perform that song, ideally, and most people are the same way, ideally you get to the point to where you're thinking more about delivering to the audience, interacting with the audience, maybe uh, you're singing, but you're thinking much less about your guitar playing, but it's still happening because you programmed it into muscle memory. You programmed it into your body. You programmed it into your brain. And that's what we're going for here. Okay, Frank Moore, how do you keep the counting from screwing up your strumming pattern? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to answer this by saying this, <laughs> that... You don't want the counting to get in the way of the strumming. You want the counting to help your strumming. So what I do and what I've demonstrated here so far is I'll slow it down enough so that the two help each other. The two help each other work. That's what you've got to do. If you're if you're, if you're counting and you're strumming are competing with each other, you're going too fast. The other thing I'll say is that the metronome is absolutely your friend. If you're, if you're slowing it down, but you're slowing it down to the point, remember earlier, I, was, I slowed it down to the point to where it became awkward to feel the groove. Introduce the metronome and practice the counting first. You know, we got the metronome going. One and two. Now get your foot going. Just always have your foot going to the metronome. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a one and two and three and four. Once you're able to count with the metronome, involve the rest of your body and count while you're doing that and then drop the counting. Make them work together, and that's how. Slow it down, count with the metronome, develop the, the tempo in your mind, then transfer it to your body. Now, if you're trying to learn a specific rhythm, which again, we're gonna get into that next week, if you're trying to learn specific rhythms, when you're doing that, we're gonna go over that more next week. Um, the, the key there is you do wanna count it first, and I'll just do one. We'll, we'll go to number 13 again. Uh, third, fourth line down. I'm going to count this. I'm going to keep the, the pulse on my leg. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two. Notice I'm being musical with it. Even when I'm counting. One, one, two, three, and four, and one, two. Three and four and take it to your body. One and two. One, two, three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Count with it. One, two, three, and four and one and two. Ha, ha. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Oh, notice what I'm doing there. Counting ands playing the rhythm with my hands. Another game independence thing you can do. Not necessary, it's more important that you feel it. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. Okay, um, Rhonda 2013. The PDF scares me. I don't understand yeah. it. Can you talk about how to use the PDF? Yeah. For this week, the PDF 
you only want to stick to the first three lines. The first line, I need a little pointer. The first line, um, yeah, actually that, th this way. Okay. Uh, you see the first line, first measure, you see a whole note. That's one count per beat. So that would be, if I've got my, my foot going, that'd be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Second measure, first line, half notes. That's two claps per beat. This is all you want to think about for this week on the PDF so that it does not scare you. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Third line and, or sorry, third measure and fourth measure are quarter notes. So we're feeling the quarter note with our, with our foot, our leg. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Three, four, one. Down to the second line, measure five. We have the eighth notes, which we've been feeling. One, and two, and the whole line. This is just to give you an example, a starting example of how things look when they're notated rhythmically. Because next week, we're going to get on and we're going to explore the other lines of this PDF. But ignore the, and I wanted you to see all these rhythms because I wanted you to see where we're building to next week. And for those of you who are kind of yawning during this, maybe you can try some of these rhythms uh, on your own this week as well. Eighth notes, sixteenth notes. This is line three. Okay, that's how to use the PDF this week. First three lines, and if you're feeling adventurous, get a head start on the, on the rest of it. But next week, we're going to take this concept, and we're going to learn, and it, we're not only going to learn these, because these are easy to count, right? You can sit here and count these all day. We're going to internalize them. We're going to groove with them and we're going to take them to, to the guitar. That's the main thing that's, that, that we're going to be doing next week. We're going to be taking these rhythms, which are actually very catchy rhythms. We're going to, we're going to put them to the guitar. Good. Okay. So I want to introduce a secret weapon. These things are amazing strumming therapy devices because they force you to play a 16th note groove. <laughs> if you don't, if you, at least they do for me, they force you to play a 16th note groove. They don't, if you, if you don't keep the rhythm with them consistently, they're a mess, right? I mean, you have to, cause you have to get the little things going in there and you have to get them into you have to have to make it work okay so what I'm gonna do now I notice I'm not keeping a rhythm right now I'm gonna keep my foot going you can barely hear it and then I'm gonna start shaking this and I, I want you to see if you can grasp any similarities between what we've talked about and what I'm doing. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Okay. What do you hear? Maybe there's some participants before I tell them what I'm hearing. Anybody? 
uh, Slippin' Lizard says he can hear the accent on the one beat. Yes. Good. You should win something. <laughs> Any? What does anybody else hear? Foot still constant on the first beat. Uh-huh. Yep. Very good. Southern Cash hears subdivisions. Yes, subdivisions. That's that's key. What are the subdivisions? What do you hear? What did you hear subdivision-wise? This is really, really key. Okay, Subdiv the subdivisions that you heard were 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a. I'm shaking it back and forth. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a. So the similarities between shaking an egg and maintaining this 16th note pattern while you're strumming other rhythms, it, it's one and the same. And I strongly recommend that you go, that you go buy one of these eggs. Go to a music store, order it on Amazon, buy one at Walmart. I'm sure they've got something that shakes if it's not an actual egg. Buy a baby toy, who, who knows? Um, but it, it's, it's very, this 16th note, what we're doing here is we're, we're saying, we're, we're, we're laying the bedrock with our, 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 our foot. We're tapping in quarter notes. But the 16th note feel in your upper body, in your hand, in your wrist, that is so important as we get into to, to, to doing these strum patterns. Can you play these rhythms without this sense of this quarter note and 16th note feel? Absolutely. Will you play them better and be a better rhythm player and sound more natural and have less trouble changing chords, have less trouble communicating passionate rhythm playing? Yes, you will. This will come much more naturally to you once we get these rhythms in the different parts of your body. And the egg is a fantastic way to do it. It's a fantastic way to do it. And it's a lot smaller than the guitar. And it's, what's interesting is it's actually, it's one of those, and it's like I was talking about earlier, when we take the guitar away and we focus on this technique, we're gonna be thinking about this in a whole new way when we go to the guitar. That's why we're doing this. Because when we go to the guitar, and I don't know about you, but when I practice the guitar, it's very easy for me to pick up the guitar and, oh, I'm going to work on rhythm. Nah, I'll play that Jimi Hendrix lead. Because you're distracted with, I got pedals, I got guitars, I have to change my strings. I have No, we're focusing on rhythm. We're focusing on, on getting the, the rhythm in our bodies and then going the, then going the direction of, uh, of the guitar. And the egg, once you've got... Once you've got this stuff down, try an egg. Try a salt shaker, but close it off, you know. So, uh, any other questions related to that? Okay, we're going to spend a little bit of time with the egg. I'm going to count while I'm doing this. I can't, I can't talk and do an egg at the same time. I can count, though. One, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two, three. Hear the sixteenth note. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go to eighth notes on my mouth. One and two and three and four and one and two. One. Ha. <laughs> Now you notice, and there's been a number of times that this has happened during this session. I'll try something new and I'll blow it and I'll have to practice it. That's, and it's happening quickly on camera because I, I have the experience of internalizing the rhythms. But it still happens, right? This, that should prove to you that this is a learned technique, a learned thing. Chad, looks like there's a question. No? Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna open it up for more general Q&A now. Uh, the lesson portion went a little longer than I thought it would, which is great. Thank you so much for the interaction, so much for the questions. Um, I need to get someone to commit to showing me this next week on camera for calling in. Someone commit. Hurry, they might win a T-shirt. You'll win a T-shirt 
if you if you call if you commit and you actually do it next week, that's right. We'll send you one of these, one of these T-shirts. See, they got that cool guy holding it. That's what's wrong. Anybody? No, uh, it's probably one of the guys that's watching on live stream and the chat room's full. Well, I'm going to take the t-shirt then. I don't have enough of them. Okay. Any general questions before I shake the egg more? Internalize the rhythm. Those of you who've, who've been tracking with me the whole time and doing this, how are you doing with it? How's it feeling? The other question I have for you, are you able to see how this relates to some of the rhythmic struggles you may have while you're playing the guitar? I know I've demonstrated some of them, but I'm interested to hear any stories from anybody. Can you, can you relate to some of the struggles? What are some of the struggles that you have when playing rhythm guitar? And can you relate them here to what we're doing in this context? Got a lot of commitments for videos next week. Oh yeah? yeah. You're gonna be giving away a lot of free t-shirts. Jason will be busy. Don't let you don't don't think that this is the goal next week. This is the extreme. Maybe you'll win two t-shirts if you can do this one and count it. Um, I'm gonna get fired for giving too many things away. Any feedback? What are some of the things that you guys have had, that you guys have struggled with, and are you able to see how this relates in to solving at least part of that problem? Now, there's so many layers we have yet to peel, uh, peel back in the next nine weeks after this week, and I'm really excited to be doing that. We're gonna, we're gonna intentionally steer away from at least for the first eight weeks, there's going to be no improvising on the guitar. There's going to be no, uh, there's going to be very little fret hand work. We're going to be going for strumming mechanics, again, this human metronome concept. And uh, some of the examples, and you can go through and you can look at some of the examples in advance on the tab. Some of the examples are very, very simple, but that is intentional. Because, again, we are breaking things down to a level that will help you internalize them. How are we doing, Chad? Pretty good. A lot of people seem to be getting it. Cool. If, um, some people are still struggling with some of the concepts. Good. Struggle um, with it all week. And then show me and win a t-shirt next week. I'm interested to hear some of the real world struggles and how they relate to, uh, to what we're doing or re the real world struggles in general. You know what I know for me, until I got this internal rhythm thing down, I, I stunk completely at strumming. Totally. Yeah. Slip and lizard says he finds it hard to keep his hand strumming, his strumming hand moving constantly sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to try to say it's luck. Luke, something. I used to have a lot of trouble with rhythm, but once I started tapping the foot, everything clicked. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the foot tapping is... If you if you take nothing else out of this lesson, the foot tapping is absolutely... I mean, that is the very beginning of, of, of starting that internal metronome, that, that human metronome concept. Absolutely. If you take nothing else away from it. Tap that foot. Bob that head. There's a reason that... Th that Accomplished musicians always look loose, and you know, performing musicians always look loose if if they're entertaining, right? It's because they've internalized that rhythm, and tapping your foot is the very first part of that. I've got a couple people talking about struggling to keep their hand moving constantly. I don't know if there's anything else you can struggling to keep their hand moving constantly. Do you mean on the uh, Do you mean on the eighth note, or? Or are you talking about strumming, keeping their hand moving constantly? We're going to get a lot more into that next week. 
I really, I really want you to focus. The, the beauty of this is you don't have to go buy an egg. Buying an egg is a good thing to do. Uh, but everybody can do this. Everybody can put their guitar down and start with this stuff. That's, that's what I really encourage you to do. If you're strumming and you're trying to do this stuff already while strumming, and I gave some of it away to sort of relate it back to how it has to do with strumming. But if you're doing that, you're skipping this very valuable step, which is the foundation of this whole series. The whole series is that we're putting things into our body first, and then we're putting them on the guitar. And if you're, do if you're not gonna do that, then just go read a tab book and keep screwing up your rhythms. The point is, we want to internalize something first and then bring it to the guitar. That's why this is so important. Yes, this is a 64 ounce clean canteen, which is why it's so large. I saw that question come in, but they filtered it. Well, if there are no more general questions, we may be, we may be saying goodbye fairly soon. Good? Yeah, there were some technical issues for a second there, but I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for the interaction. Thank you so much for, for tracking with me and for being willing to dissect your playing to a degree that most people don't, don't do. You know, especially if they've been doing for a while. Be encouraged if you've stuck with this. And, it, and you know, show up next week. We're going to get to the rest of this PDF. We're going to learn how to internalize these rhythms. And just to plug the rest of the series, we're not going to stop with general rhythms like this. We're going to get into different genres. We're going to get into what diff the, the strumming, how, how strumming takes a different role in certain types of rhythm, certain styles of rhythm. We're going to get into learning how to combine strumming with left with some left hand techniques, hammer ons, pull offs, stuff like that. That'll be later in the series. We're gonna spend some time on uh, on shave and haircut and bow diddly rhythms, which are really common rhythms in in all sorts of styles of music. We're gonna get into some you know singer songwriter type rhythms. And if you if you go, the cool thing about the format that we have now is that. You can go through, not only can you view the lessons that have already been done in this series, but you can skip ahead and see what the topics of are of the next 10 weeks and see how things sort of roll into one another. Read the notes, look at the tab, look at the examples, look at the backing tracks. Once we get later into the series, we've got a ton of backing tracks, genre specific backing tracks. And we're gonna be looking at how different strum parts relate and work together with different strum parts. So now we're not only internalizing a rhythm and playing it, but we're listening to other rhythm elements and letting those influence our decisions and our strumming. So, but you can't do that until you have the bedrock. But that's where we're going. We're going to be getting into arranging, uh, taking different strum parts and seeing how they work in the midst of other music and other strumming patterns and other, other elements going on, both drum and guitar. So I hope you'll join me for the rest of the 10 weeks. This has been great. We'll see you next week.